not, there is not a time when you bring a word from the word that hasn't been poured over, prayed over, and, and, and the spirit really sought out in the midst of that time. And so I'm excited to hear the word that you have prepared. We are, we are preaching on resurrection in the month of June today, the resurrection of creation. And before you speak that word, let us sing over you. Let us sing over the word that is to come. Let us sing to uh, the, the, the spirit of the church that is gathered in many places, but gathered as one, a song that speaks into the resurrection uh, of creation. Let's sing together. When the mountains fall and the tempest roars, you are with me. When creation folds, still my soul will soar on your mercy. And I'll walk through the fire with my head lifted high and my spirit revived in your story. And I'll look to the cross as my failure is lost in the light of your glorious grace so let the ruins come to life in the beauty of your name rising up from the ashes god forever you reign and my soul will find refuge in the shadow of your wings i will love you forever and forever I'll sing. When the world caves in, still my hope will cling to your promise. And where my courage ends, let my heart find strength in your presence. I'll walk through the fire with my head lifted high and my spirit revived in your story. And I'll look to the cross as my failure is lost in the light of your glorious grace. So let the ruins come to life in the beauty of your name. Rising up from the ashes, God forever you reign. And my soul will find refuge in the shadow of your wings. I will love you forever and forever I'll sing. Let the ruins come to life in the beauty of your name. Rising up from the ashes, God forever you reign. And my soul will find refuge in the shadow of your wings. I will love you forever and forever I'll sing. Let the ruins come to life in the beauty of your name. Rising up from the ashes, God forever you reign. And my soul will find refuge in the shadow of your wings i will love you forever and forever i'll sing wow amen you sing resurrection into being let the ruins come to life what a beautiful word uh, Russell, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I take those to heart. And I, too, am so grateful for this church, for this amazing staff, um, and all of the support and love. Call it resurrection. Call it good, as God did on the very first day. I'd like to read now from the 21st chapter of Revelation, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, 
and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of God for the people of God. And together we say, thanks be to God. What a beautiful vision. It has been said that creation is the first Bible, the first word of God spoken into reality in the beginning, written long before the Bible of words. It's scriptural. Paul says in Romans 1, ever since God created the world, God's everlasting power and divinity, however invisible, are there. Creation is the first Bible. Holiness hovers over the chaos and brings order. It has always been, and it always will be. I rarely preach from the book of Revelation. It's just too easy to get hung up on the fantastical, the somewhat terrifying images of the apocalypse, right? It gets pretty weird. It is one man's prophetic vision, John writing from the island of Patmos, of how God will finally make everything new. But all too often, Revelation is used to scare people into faith, which is impossible. Fear has nothing to do with faith. However, in the 21st chapter here, we see a very hopeful and affirming vision of the Holy Spirit's ongoing work of resurrection. All things are being made new and whole once again. God's shalom, God's peace, in which everyone and everything in all of creation is flourishing. God will put an end to death. That sounds great. All things will be made new. So in our second week in this series on resurrection, today we are considering the resurrection of creation. What all does that include? The trees, the birds, the sky, the air, the darkness and light, all things that slither and crawl, the rocks, the fire, the wind, and us, yes, us. God is resurrecting all of this. What does that mean? I was thinking back to the last time I preached in the sanctuary. It was March, right after we went into quarantine. And I mentioned at that time that instead of saying, God is in everything, perhaps we might flip that and say, all things are in God. Because the other way might be too passive as if anything was here before God willed it. So let's give credit where credit is due. All things are in God, even us. A new heaven and a new earth breaking forth. It sounds good. It sounds really good. But the reality is very difficult to see, very difficult to imagine. I've said more than once in recent weeks that the world feels apocalyptic. 
not as in end of times, but the original word means something closer to an uncovering. What has been hidden is being revealed. Revelation, as in the book that we're talking about today. And what is being revealed, what is being uncovered, is feeling pretty chaotic and fearful. And that's pretty much what we've come to expect from transformation. God speaks order over chaos. God, when you say all things, all things really, what do you mean? I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, all things in God, not just the living, but also the dying, not just the creating, but also the destruction. Our story (coughs) begins with holiness in the midst of absolute chaos. And nature, as God's word, is a trustworthy guide. Life has a way of composting and seeding us, just as autumn does every year with the earth. Our faith says that possibility and hope get planted in us in the midst of the most difficult times. Even now, in our isolation and separation and struggle, oh God, we are struggling. What seeds might be taking root? That is a question of faith, not what do we fear, What is God transforming in us? What is God awakening and calling up in our very lives? What old life is being churned and turned over in order to give us new life today? Surely we have witnessed nature's testimony that dying itself, as devastating as we know it can be, contains a certain beauty. Theologian and author Thomas Merton says that there is, in all things visible, a hidden wholeness. In the visible world of nature, he says, a great truth is concealed in plain sight. Diminishment and beauty, light and dark, death and life are not opposites. They're held together in the paradox of a hidden wholeness. They cohabit and co-create in mysterious unity at the heart of reality. And deeper still, they need each other for health. Just as our well-being depends on breathing in and breathing out. To live fully is to celebrate the primal power that is forever making all things new. Perhaps new is already here among us, trying to break through wherever, wherever we are willing to make room for it in our lives. Wherever we're willing to give new life a chance, waves of resurrection wash over us. They immerse us in love. Episcopal priest and author Barbara Brown Taylor says, I know plenty of people who find God most reliable in books, in buildings, and even in other people. I have found God in all of these places, too. But the most reliable meeting place for me has always been creation. Since I first became aware of the divine presence in that lit-up field in Kansas, I have known where to go when my flame is guttering. Do you know what it is to have your flame gutter? Mm. She goes on. To lie with my back flat on the fragrant ground is to receive a transfusion of that same power that makes the green blade rise. To remember that I am dirt, and to dirt I shall return, is to be given my life back again, if only for one present moment at a time. Where other people see acreage, timber, soil, and river frontage, I see God's body, or at least as much of it as I'm able to see. If the only wisdom I have at my disposal, the creator does not live apart from creation, but spans 
and suffuses it. When I take a breath, God's Holy Spirit enters me. When a cricket speaks to me, I talk back. Like everything else on earth, like everything else on earth, I am an embodied soul who leaps to life when I recognize my kin. So Whitney Pakanowski has worked really hard over the last few weeks to gift our church with some worship guides that can be used either in uh, parallel with the worship service or they were designed also to use individually in your own prayer time or in small groups during the week. She and I worked together to provide resources for you to use in the hopes that you would discover some new tools and references. We came up with a few questions to consider and pray over. And I'd like to just take a minute to hold up a few of those questions together now. In what ways does creation speak to resurrection today? Can we see it? Can we taste it? Can we hold it? Can we take it in? What is God asking to be made new in your life today? Pray about this question this week and maybe pay attention to what bubbles up. It could be in nature or relationships or old patterns of thought that just keep us trapped. Is resurrection ongoing or is it yet to be realized or both? How can an experience of nature help us make sense of things that we experience but do not see or touch or hold? How might we participate in the resurrection of creation, in our church, in our community, and in our world? I would love to hear from you on this. We need creative responses to these important questions. What steps might we take together as a holy community of God. When you imagine the world in 10 or 20 or 30 years, whether you hope to be here or not, none of us know, but what do you hope for, for future generations? Maybe for your own children or your grandchildren or our little ones here at FCC or the children at at Ruth's Place or the children across the ocean who are suffering What is our hope for them? Then start right here in your heart space with God and pray to be shown what you can do today to start working toward this resurrection. I promise you, God will bring you resurrection. God is making all things new in this way. A new heaven, a new, earth, a new earth, begin taking seed and breaking forth. So, maybe get outside this week. If you need to wake up early before it gets hot and go for a walk, take a little time, 10 or 15 minutes, to notice the beauty in your midst. Walk without a destination. Walk for the sole purpose of noticing beauty. Breathe deeply and feel that breath of God filling your lungs and inspiring you, inspiring you. And listen to what it's saying. See things in their wholeness, their holiness, and participate in that holiness wherever you go, wherever you gaze. Witness the new heaven and the new earth emerging even now in our midst. God will be with you. God will wipe every tear from your eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Take a cool drink of water and feel it giving you life. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Even now. Even now, God's creative and redemptive spirit is forging new relationships of love that include the earth, all peoples, and all of creation. In Jesus, divine love bursts forth with hopes and dreams 
for a new world. This new world is within our reach. If we awaken to the power of love, the, p the power to be created anew. Amen.